A report published this morning claims that Irish beef and dairy farms could be carbon neutral if efforts to reduce emissions and capture carbon continue. It's a bold claim, but the Irish Farmers Journal commissioned report by KPMG says it's achievable. In fact, one farm in County Meath is on target to be carbon neutral by 2025. Our agriculture correspondent Fran McNulty has been to the farm. He's with us now. Fran, where is this carbon neutral aspiring enterprise? Gavin, it's in one of the most beautiful settings in County Meath. Douth Hall is an 18th century house and the 400 or so acres that surround it are owned by Devonish Nutrition. It's a food and farming company and has invested heavily in research and development and Douth uh, is the hub of that that activity. The farm itself uh, is in a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Despite that, it's pioneering cutting edge technologies to help reduce the amount of fertiliser needed and increase the amount of carbon that the farm can offset. It's been listed as one of the most sustainable farms in the world. And Dr. Jean Kennedy is head of research with Devonish, and she's been telling me about the targets for doubt. We are aiming to produce carbon neutral beef and lamb by 2025. Right now, we know that we are offsetting 50% of our carbon emissions on this farm with two livestock units per hectare. Uh, that's not taking into account the interventions that we have put in place to improve that further. By 2025, I expect uh, this farm will look um, somewhat similar to, to uh, how it's looking now. We will be farming probably at two livestock units per hectare. We will be standing in fields like this with multi-species sward, in other words, different types of grasslands, uh, and we will be using less chemical inputs. We will be surrounded by trees and hedgerows, and we'll be really appreciating them, probably for the first time. It's Jean Kennedy from Devon. Is Fran, of course, this whole issue of reducing emissions is very topical at the moment. It is, Gavin. We know the Green Party and the Government Formation Talks is insisting on targets. We often hear about cutting the size of the national herd. It's seen as one possible solution. And certainly reducing the intensity of farming is, a, is another thing that's on the table. And farmers are very touchy about this issue. They're often criticised for not doing enough to change, and we'll hear from one such voice presently. But Lorcan Allen from the Farmers Journal makes the case that the agri-sector is actively dealing with the issues that it's facing. Listening to the commentary over the last month uh, about reducing our emissions by 7%, there's a public perception that Irish agriculture is doing nothing really to address climate change, but it actually couldn't be more wrong. Uh, so the Irish Farmers Journal and KPMG produced this uh, report this year to show all of the positive things that are going on in agriculture to actually meet uh, the climate agenda. Carbon neutral farming is it's a bold claim. Is it achievable? The farm we're on here today is doing world-leading research where they're actually not only trying to lower the emissions from this herd of cattle beside me, but also trying to uh, measure the sequestration of the farm and how much carbon the farm is actually capturing out of the atmosphere. To the critics who simplify it as saying we need to reduce the herd and, and that achieves it, what do you say to that? At the end of the day, the world population is heading for 10 billion people. We still need to feed that population. Uh, and, you know, reducing production in a part of the world like Ireland where... We have a sustainable model of food production here. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's more important that countries like Ireland continue to produce food uh, and export it to parts of the world where, you know, producing food isn't uh, as uh, sustainable for, for the world. There's no doubt the agri-sector is trying to deal with the emissions issues. The boom in dairy hasn't helped. There's been a drive towards more intensive farming, but even this week the EU is trying to push back. It wants more organic, and whilst farmers have been working to capture carbon, more needs to be done, and in fact Europe is looking at ways to encourage farmers to do more. Now, there are claims and counterclaims about whether farming emissions are up and down, or up or down, and it depends on what figures you read as to what statistic is quoted. Now, John Gibbons of Antashka is very critical of the farming sector and what it's been doing and we met in his birdsong filled garden in Dublin. If they're trying to deal with it, they're doing it in a very peculiar way because, for example, since 2015, emissions across the agricultural sector have risen by about 8%. Now, how do you define success in an era of emissions reductions when you're presiding over a system in which the emissions are rising? So I think what the farming sector and the agricultural uh, lobby has gotten really good at is talking a good fight on emissions reductions. What we're not seeing is coming through in the data. I think what we need is a modal shift, a shift in mindset. 
At the moment, they're approaching it from the point of view that they've got a system that is set up in a particular way, a system that benefits large-scale producers, uh, PLCs and beef factories. It also, by the way, suits um, supermarkets because it's delivering cheap food. What it is not doing is it is not benefiting the average Irish farmer who's seeing his income go down and down, and it is certainly not benefiting biodiversity in Ireland. We have, at the moment, what amounts to a biodiversity wasteland in this country. John Gibbons of Ontashka, plus a few birds for a compliment, ending that report by Fran McNulty. 746.